Hello there. Hi. Uh, my name's John Hitchman. I'm a student advisor, immigration and finance. And I'm going to be doing this webinar today, which is a presentation, brief presentation, probably about 10 minutes long, about undergraduate student finance. So, so this is aimed at people that are starting an undergraduate degree at SOAS in September this year. Um, if you have any questions, I'd appreciate it if you could keep those until the end, probably about 10 minutes time, but then we've got as long as it takes really to answer those. If there's anything really technical or complicated, I might ask you to contact me directly and we can continue this, you know, one-to-one. Um, -one. But anyway, so without, without more ado, let's start the presentation. So first of all, let's do a quiz. I hope you've all got your quizzing hats on. And let's see, what's the first quiz question? Ah, it doesn't work. <laughs> OK, my quiz isn't that exciting, because as you can see, the answers are visible, I think because of the, the software that I'm using here. So this quiz is just to try and get you to think about how much things are going to cost when you start university. So there's a textbook. As you can see, to buy that textbook new would cost you quite a lot of money. Um, but obviously, there are places like eBay or ABE Books where you can pick things up for a lot less than the, the new price. There's the student staple diet. Hopefully not. Of course, we encourage healthy eating. But um, even with things like instant noodles, you can see there's quite a price difference in different brands there for something that might be quite similar. And then this is this is uh, something important to think about. Um, if you've got your travel for for getting into university, if you don't live really close to SOAS and you're going to live somewhere in and around the, the middle of London, then you start thinking about these sort of costs and budgeting for the year. So a weekly travel card that will allow you to travel for seven days in and out of London that costs twenty four pound fifty, and you notice there's a star there. As a student at SOAS, you can apply for a, the TFL student discount. So the £24.50 is actually 30% less than most people pay for a weekly travel card or for travel in London. Okay, so there's another little price comparison for you. So no need to call the answer out because it's written down. But yeah, you can get some vans. You know, anything, you know, you can shop around. We encourage you to look for bargains. Um, when you get your student finance, you're going to get a, a huge amount of money paid into your account. It might be the first time you've ever had that amount of money. And it's really important that you think about what's coming up ahead and what your costs are and what you have to spend that money on for the term ahead, you know, before you start thinking about things like a lovely pair of vans like that. And so one of those costs would be um, the cost of halls of residence. And you can see there, there's a, a massive variety in the price range there. And it really, you know, you could spend more than £300 a week, actually, if you had that sort of money. Our halls are £164 per week. That includes bills. Um, it's in the middle of that price range. But, but the good thing about our halls is they're very local. So they're within walking distance of so as so. If you have your room there, you don't need the travel card. You probably just need an umbrella. It's like a 10 minute walk, 15 minute walk in case it rains. Yeah, some of the halls are a lot cheaper. The 80 pound hall is out towards um, East Finchley. So you'd be looking at spending um, that sort of 24 pound a week for the, for the travel card. Okay, so what we're gonna do in the presentation today, we're gonna talk about the financial support that you can apply for from students. Generally, this presentation is aimed at um, English-based UK nationals, okay, um, but it's going to have information for EU nationals, and if you're from um, Scotland, Wales, or Northern Ireland, I'm going to point you in the right direction for that as well. So a lot of the information should cover everybody, everybody except for those coming from outside of Europe to study. So everybody else, there should be something here for you. So yeah, we're going to cover the tuition fee loan. We're going to look at the different types of funding you could get to help with the cost of living, um, some additional support as well. And then we're going to look at how you apply and also how you repay the loan and some other tips at the end. So 
So firstly, um, the, you know, the good news, and you're probably aware of this, is that you don't have to pay your fees up to SOAS. You don't have to do that. You can get a tuition fee loan from the government, and this will cover the full SOAS fee, which is 9000 250 for 1920 and that will be your fee rate for the rest of your course so you can borrow that loan and that loan you can get that for every year of your course if you're doing a three-year program or four-year program you'll get that fee loan paid every year and with loans you start repaying them once you've graduated or once you've started earning and then on top of the fee loan there's also a maintenance loan, and this is to cover your living costs. Now, some of this, around about 40% of it, is based on your household income, um, but majority of it isn't. So maximum you can get if you live in London, or you, sorry, if you study in London, which you will be doing, is £11,672. So you can get a little bit less than that, dependent on your parents' income. And if you're um, going to be lucky enough to be living at your parents' home, so maybe your parents live in London, then the amount of money you can borrow is less, so 7,529. The expectation, hopefully, is your cost of living is going to be a lot lower because you hope, hopefully you don't have to pay a huge amount of rent or, or maybe no rent at all living with mum and dad. And then on top of the maintenance loan for your living costs, as so as we also have bursaries, and the bursaries are aimed at students from low income families. So what that means is you're at the maximum, you're getting the, the maximum amount of maintenance loan and that's household incomes less than 25,000 pounds. And if you are in that category, then you qualify for 1500 pounds for each year of your studies. And you don't have to apply for that bursary. Okay, all you have to do is apply for student finance and be means tested. Now, it may be that you don't want to take a maintenance loan, okay? It's not something that you want to do, but you can still apply for student finance and be means tested, and then you can say that you want to take zero loan, and by doing that means test, you could still qualify for the bursary. So, uh, just because you take the loan or not, it doesn't matter, but it's based on your household income. So, if you don't want to take a loan, you can still be means tested, and still receive the, the SOAS bursary. And then if you have a look at our scholarships and bursaries website, you can see other bursaries that may be available, including one that we have that's aimed at displaced people, so asylum seekers and those who are refugees into the United Kingdom. So on top of those um, on bursary and maintenance loan, um, we have hardship funds here. And those are funds that you can apply for if you've fallen into problems throughout the year. So you've got all your other funding in place and you've got your Oyster card and you've got probably a bank account with an interest-free overdraft, so a student account. If you've got all that stuff up and running and then something happens, you have a bit of financial difficulty, then you can apply for hardship funds and we'll do an assessment of, of your situation. But if, if we agree that you're in hardship, then you could qualify for some money that you don't have to repay, that would just be a grant. Okay. Now, um, this is other money from student finance um, called the Disabled Students Allowance. And this is to help with the cost um, face for students who have a disability. So to enable you to study on an equal basis with other students. And anything you get from the Disabled Students Allowance doesn't be repaid. And the amount you get doesn't depend on household income either. So it just depends on your needs. And this could cover things like specialist equipment, um, for instance, computer software, voice recognition software, perhaps. Maybe you need one-to-one -one support. So we have study skills tutors here, but we also have um, mentors, so people that will help you with sort of life skills as well as study. And it may help with travel costs if you have a mobility related disability. And then also you could get help with costs like photocopying and printing. So another type of funding you could get from student finance is, is if you have a dependent adult or dependent child. 
and um, so they call the adult dependent grant and the child care grant. Child care cost grant can help with the cost of registered child care. So in a nursery or with a child minder that's officer registered. And the adult dependence grant that will help you with the costs of supporting an adult family member who doesn't have any income of their own. And probably that would be somebody that you're a carer for. And then if you're a parent and you, you can qualify for the child care grant, but you'll also get a thing called parents learning allowance. And that's a grant that again, you don't have to repay that will just give you some money um, because you're a parent in higher education and your costs may be a little bit higher than other students. So as I said, I'm going to talk about European students as well. So as, as you're quite aware, I'm sure um, the United Kingdom's in the process, you know, very slow process of, of leaving the European Union. Um, but during this process, the government have guaranteed that any e nationals starting their programme in 2009 will get their funding guaranteed for the whole um, of their programme. So that, that's so as you could be doing a four year degree, your funding's guaranteed for the whole duration of that degree. But there are different ways you can qualify for this funding. And I think the tuition fee loan, that's what you would get if you're an EU national that's just coming to the UK in order to study the course. And probably you're thinking about leaving afterwards, but whether you are or not, you've just arrived just at the, at the start of the course to um, study. So you, you just get the tuition fee loan. Now, if you're an EU national who's been living here for quite a long time. So if you've been living here for five years before the 1st of September this year, you can also qualify for the maintenance loan. And you'll just need to prove that at the start of the course, and then you should be able to get that every year. Now, you might be an EU national who's been living here for a few months, or maybe living here now, and you're living here in September the 1st, and you're also going to be working while you study and you can qualify for the maintenance loan too. Um, whether this will continue for the whole of your programme, I think that's like slightly more up in the air. So we know this will be the situation for 2019. Should be for 2020 as well, which has just been announced, but um, we, we couldn't guarantee that you'll always be able to receive this funding once the UK, um, well, once these guarantees are finished after we've left the UK. The European Union. But for everybody else, so you'll definitely get the um, tuition fee loan. And if you've been here for five years, you can definitely get the maintenance for the whole course. <coughs> now, everybody's entitled to this funding, but the only thing that could affect you getting it would be if you have previously studied higher education. And so uh, that could be something like a Bachelor of the Arts or Bachelor of Sciences, so BA, BSc. But perhaps something like a foundation degree. If you if you you're a mature student, maybe you've studied something like an HND or a certificate or something in the past. So those sort of qualifications could affect your entitlement to funding. If you don't have an honours degree, you may still qualify for some funding. But if you have any queries, this is the kind of thing we can definitely talk to you about. Um, but if you know things like your A levels, or if you've done a foundation diploma, normally. Um, access courses, HE diplomas, ABC diplomas, those sorts of things, they shouldn't count. So anything that's below degree level shouldn't affect your entitlement. But even if you have one previous year of degree level funding, that shouldn't stop you doing a degree in 2019. Okay, so how do you apply? Um, online, it's very straightforward. You just go to the gov.uk website and if you're a UK um, national, then you just give the, the Student Finance England your passport number and your parents' NI number, and then they can check everything, your identity and your household income. It's, it's a very quick application. It'll probably take about 20 minutes to do. And then how about repaying the loan? Okay, so that's something that, that you're gonna to need to think about over the years. And so the way they describe it is they say you're eligible for repayment um, from the April after you leave or graduate from university. So you tend to finish around about now is the end of our undergrad term. And so it, we'd be thinking students who are graduating this year will be 
looking at repay, starting repayments in April next year. And you only repay money, a percentage of what you earn over 25,725. So if you earn less than 25,725 pounds, you don't repay anything. Then if you earn over that amount, you pay back 9% of anything over that amount that you earn. So, and that money is taken directly um, from your taxation. So, um, when you when you you pay your tax pay, P A Y E, it's called you pay as you earn. When you see your payslip, you'll see things are deducted from it. Um, maybe you're like you're paying a pension contribution, but also your national insurance will come out, and then you'll see a deduction as well for your loan. So essentially, it will feel like you're being taxed a little bit more because of your degree. And to give you an idea of what those repayments look like, so you can see there, it's only really once you're starting to earn a considerable amount more than the, the 25,700 that you're paying back, or 27,000 you're paying back 15 pounds a month, and a 30,000 you're paying back 37 pounds a month. So it's, it's never going to be difficult to repay. And if for some reason your working situation changes, you just keep student finance updated and that they, if you fall below that threshold, they won't expect you to continue repaying. Okay, um, how do you make your money last? We've talked a little bit about this, but a good website to use is the Brightside calculator that helps you budget for the whole year. So that's something that you should be thinking about now, you know, thinking about how much loan you might get. If you apply for student finance quickly, you can get an answer from them. And then look at that and think, I'm going to have to budget that out over the course of the year. You know, a lot of undergrad students um, will get some sort of a part-time job while they're studying to just make a little bit of extra money. But there are some simple things you can do. So you're choosing um, a student bank account. Probably the best reason, like student banks will be very keen to get your business when you're a student because generally people stay with their bank for a very long time. But I think the key thing you should really be looking for from a student bank account is the size of the interest-free overdraft. And you can compare those online, look at websites like Money Saving Expert or Money Supermarket. And really that would be the key thing. You know, if you if times are getting a bit tough while you're a student, if you can borrow interest-free, that's a fantastic thing. So some of those accounts will give you up to £3,000 that you can use for an interest-free overdraft. Now, it's always a good idea to avoid um, expensive borrowing. So obviously interest-free would be the best thing you can do. But, um, you know, the key things to avoid, borrowing on credit cards, you could be looking at 25% on those. Store cards, you know, quite a bit more. And then things like payday loans, they're absolutely preposterous. So 500 to 1,000% even, because they charge you by the day. So we definitely avoid, advise you to avoid anything like that. Or if you're having any problems with any of those things, you know, come and see us or get in touch with us. Um, you can get things like the Unidays card or NUS Extra, which I think is now called the Totem card. And you get some amazing discounts with that. So all you've got to do is, um, I think, give them your university email address. So as soon as you're here, you can do that. And then you're getting like massive discounts on food, on the cinema, um, even on shopping at, at shops like Culp, you can get 10% off your grocery shop. So definitely up for, for one or both of those cards. And then as I mentioned, as soon as you enroll, make sure you've got the Oyster 18 Plus card, which will give you 30% off your travel around London. So that's the end of my presentation. Thanks for listening. Um, if you've got any questions, I'm going to stick around and answer those for you. So I've got a question saying, can you apply for the bursary if you've already applied for student finance? So yeah, essentially, you you will we automatically assess for the bursary if you've been means tested, so you've provided your parents' income details, or you're over 25, or you're considered independent, then that's fine. You'll be assessed automatically for the bursary. But if you haven't been means tested yet, you need to do that part of the process. So somebody's asking about sharing information. So part of the application is the fact on the student finance application, it will ask you if you are happy to share your financial information with the university. You have to do that in order for us to assess you for the bursary. If you say no to that, I'm afraid you won't be able to um, receive the bursary.
and the bursary is only available to English based students. It's, it's limited in that respect. But as I said, it's also limited to students from low income backgrounds. So English based students from low income backgrounds. And then someone's asked about student Oyster card. If you already have a regular Oyster card, uh, my understanding is I think you get a new one. Uh, I think you pay something like £10 to get that card. But once you've got it, um, you can keep extending that each year. You don't have to keep repaying every year. But I think you extend that. I'm actually not sure. But um, yeah, there's a one charge for the card once you have it. I think you may get it for the duration of, of your degree, but you don't have to keep paying any money for that. Okay, so not getting a lot more questions. Um, thanks for listening. It's been great. We're, I think you're going to be sent a recording of this that you can look at again for future reference. But um, thanks for being my audience and we look forward to meeting you all um, so as in September. Thanks a lot.